So please help me to welcome Dr. Omar Sharif. And with these words, I request Mr. Omar to please come live, sir. Pro is all yours. Please take us through the journey. Thank you so hello, much. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, Conan. Thank you very much. You make me sound like a magician, you know, who's going to come and just open up a few things and give you the secrets of really how you want to redefine yourself. Hello, everybody. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Conan has introduced me very, very generously, so I will not even try to venture into that area. I'm going to jump directly into the talk. But before that, let me just express my gratitude. You know, I've been a part of Empowerment Talks as an audience on and off. I have been able to come online every single time it was possible for me. And here's what I, here's what I think of this platform. You know, these guys, Conan is today the face of the talk. Of, of the forum, really. The guys behind the scenes, Faisal, Yersh, Tolika, and everybody else, I absolutely salute these guys. You know, it's never easy to do a program like this every single day. Forget single day, people doing it every week find it difficult. So these guys are doing it every single day, absolutely commendable, you know? I totally salute you guys, Conan. Total gratitude to you and absolute appreciation for you guys. I've heard some of the speakers, and the speakers have been fantastic. I have had a lot of takeaways in the past. I loved every bit of it. Of course, I wish I could have been more uh, on air with ET, with Empowerment Talks. Well, whatever I could, I did. And finally, you guys, the audience, you know, I see some familiar names over here and I can, if I want to, if I can name names, I would like to appreciate Khalid. You know, Khalid has been on this talk every time I've been. I've seen him as an audience, very engaged. I'm sure there are others as well. I'm sorry if I can't recall your names, but Khalid's name is something, it's some name I've seen every single time on every single talk. So hats off to you guys again as well. A speaker cannot be a speaker if it doesn't have listeners. A session cannot be in session if it doesn't have audiences, right? So you guys are the ones who essentially make every session a success. Now, that's enough flattery for all of us, isn't it? Let's dive straight into the topic. So today's topic is redefining your life. Now, I am very, very passionate about redefining your life, reinventing yourselves, and really moving forward to the next level yourself, and helping others to move to the next level. And I, I love to do this, by the way. I have a full-time job. So whatever I do essentially is part-time. I do this in the evenings. I do this on weekends only because I get absolute fulfillment from this. And this talk is one of the ways of doing it. I love to, I love to learn. I love to share. I love to interact with people and be here on platforms like these, interacting with the wonderful team that you guys are. So let's get started. You know, when you say redefine your life, audience, what comes to your mind? I have had I have had eyebrows raised. I have had questions asked. Really? Redefine my life? Redefine myself? Why? Why do I need to? So go ahead and type it in the chat box. What do you really understand or interpret by redefining yourself, redefining your life, redefining yourself, however you might want to term it. Go ahead, show me something. Show me what you guys actually think. Let me understand if everybody here is also on the same page. Uh, there we go. New life, new you, Dr. Nabila. Thank you. What else? What does redefining yourself mean? You have a definition and then you have a redefinition. So you define yourself, then you redefine yourself. So what does redefining your life mean? I love that, better version, awesome. Recharging our life, absolutely. Okay, cool, cool, good, good, good. Great, good responses, great feedbacks. That's exactly what it is, okay? Reinvent, you're, you're right too, Giri. Absolutely, okay? Now, let's know this very well. The power of definition in our lives is huge. Capital H, capital U, capital G, capital E. It's huge. All of us, as we grow up, we have tags that we play in our heads. We have tapes that we play in our heads. We have tags on our foreheads, right? And we have this belief about ourselves as to who we are, what we want, what we are capable of, why we can do something, why we cannot do something, why can we not have the one, the one thing we desire? All this baggage of definitions, good or bad, that we carry with us 
comes from where? Comes from our childhood, comes from our upbringing, comes from the gifts that our relatives and friends gave us, right? We, we do the same, by the way. I'm sure me included, some people who are parents on this call are also guilty of doing the same to the kids. We, te we tend to give tags and names to them, don't we? When I was growing up, I remember relatives and friends used to say, oh, he's a smart one. Oh, that one's a slow one. Oh, she's creative. Oh, that's got, you know, he's the black sheep of the family. He'll take some time to get on his feet. He'll do well, but after some time, right? Everybody tries to judge you. Everybody tries to tag you. Everybody tries to label you. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, that tape tends to play in your mind. We start assuming them to be real. Happened to me, guilty as charged. I was one amongst four brothers. I have an elder brother who is super, super genius, highest IQ, okay? And he still is fantastically genius. Every time we were introduced to guests, the way we were introduced was he is very intelligent and Omar is hardworking. Every time. And so I grew up, no one was saying I was dumb, but I grew up believing I was not cool I grew up believing I have to work hard to achieve success in life. I grew up believing I have a poor communication. I grew up believing I am the black sheep of the family. I grew up with very, very poor self-esteem. Why? Because someone labeled me. Even if they didn't want it to, I interpreted it that way. And I grew up with those beliefs and those labels. And that started defining me. And those tapes and those boxes of labels and those tags are essentially what keeps us from knowing our value and moving towards the fulfillment we desire in our lives. True that? Labels can be empowering and disempowering. Absolutely, Khalid. Couldn't, ex could not expect anything lesser from you. Totally. Now, when I see people, you know, similar to me, uh, I, of course, there came a point in time where I actually moved on and broke out of my shell and realized that I'm much more than what I actually believe. And I, and I moved on. I changed myself, right? Not everybody's able to do that. And that's where I come in being. I help. I try to work with people who are into that position, who really want to move to the next level. Look, everybody, one of us, regardless of who you are, where you're from, right? Everybody, want, every one of us wants to be that person who can actually give out love, joy, goodness. We all want to live a life in a manner that others want to be in our company. We all want to learn to speak so that people want to hear what we have to say. We all want to be a light that shines brightly in your workplace, in your family, in your friendships. Question is, how do we do that? And that's exactly what redefining yourself is. Now, redefining yourself is not a magic wand. Hi everyone, just joined in. Hope, um, Ruhi, you didn't miss much. Absolutely, uh, happy you happy you joined in. Okay, so sorry, I'm getting distracted by the chat, so I'll try not to look at those chats. Okay, but feel free to type it in, show in the energy. I'll glance at it once in a while. Now, redefining yourself, I believe, is all about. For me, it worked out very well. I redefine myself by trying to understand what I want to do in life, by trying to understand what my purpose in life is by trying to be clear on which direction I want to go in. And that is something which helped me and which will help you to, to redefine your life. And that is something which we're going to talk about today. At, that, at this moment, let me take a pause and go ahead and share my screen. I normally prefer these face-to-face -face conversations, but I don't see anyone on with cameras on. So I have a presentation now. I'm going to put it on. So you guys have a double engagement of hearing and vision as well. So let me go ahead and I'm going to click on screen one and share. And if all of you can see the PowerPoint, which says redefine your life, just go ahead and say yes in the chat box. I know I'm not sharing the, the wrong screen with you guys. Yes, we can see Omar. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Michael Pinter, good to see you. Thank you very much. So, so let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, redefining your life is all about finding your purpose, finding what you want to do in life, being clear about where you are headed to, right? Easier said than done. 
you'll tell me, Omar, we know all that. We know how important focus is. We know how important clarity is. We know how important purpose is. Sounds simple, you know, decide where you want to go, pursue with passion, but yet a majority of us do not have that clarity. A majority of us do not know what next steps to take. And especially the younger generation, which is growing up in a world of unprecedented change. So today I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to share you share four questions with you, first of all, which are going to help you. You don't need to answer those questions in this chat, in this forum today. Those questions are for you. Use those questions, sit down in a corner, ask them yourselves, write them down pages if you can. And believe me, you will find a lot of clarity when you actually go through that exercise diligently. Apart from that, what I'm going to do today after that is share seven steps which will infuse clarity, not just in finding your purpose, also infuse clarity for you in your entire life, regardless of what you actually do. Let's dive straight in. Now, all of you, I'm sure, must have seen the movie Alice in Wonderland, right? Whether it's a book, whether you've seen a movie, I'm sure everybody has. If you notice, when Alice comes to this crossroad and she's unaware of which direction to take, left or right, there's this wise little cat, Cheshire cat, which asks Alice, where are you going? And Alice says, which way should I go? And the Cheshire cat says, well, that depends on where you want to go. And Alice says, I don't know. And obviously, you know what the cat says? The cat says, then it doesn't matter which way you take. So it is a life. If we are not aware which direction we want to head to or where you want to get to, it doesn't matter which path you take. It doesn't matter which way you take. So it is with purpose as well, right? Now I have traveled to multiple countries. I have been to, yeah, multiple countries and across countries, across cultures, across continents. The one commonality I have noticed is that people whether you are a C-level executive or we, whether you are a you know, daily wage earner, the chances are the person is not clear about what his purpose in life is. We all are essentially moving ahead in life, footing our bills, getting food on the table without knowing where we are headed. A majority of us do that. Maybe some of, the, some of you on this call maybe have a purpose, and I'm happy that you do, like me, but some of us don't. And that's what is what redefines you. That's what defines you as well. Live your life with purpose and passion. Absolutely true, Khaled. H.L. Hunt, who actually rose from being a bankrupt farmer to a billionaire in the U.S. in the 1930s, he was invited on a TV show and the journalist asked him if there was something you could share with the audience who wants to become financially independent, what would that be? You know what he said? He said just two things. One, everybody should try and find out what is it that they want in life. Most of us do not have a clarity on that. Two, once you know what is it that you want in life, find out the price that you need to pay to get that and strive to pay that price. Two simple statements that sum up the entire life for you if you really wanna live a life with purpose. The purpose gives you direction. Purpose gives you a sense of fulfillment. Purpose tells you which way you've got to go. It doesn't allow you to get sidetracked. I am really very happy with this country, Dubai, because Dubai allowed me to find my purpose. Dubai allowed me to really look forward in life, move to the next level and start working towards what my passion is. And I love this thing about it, right? Everybody has their own breakthroughs, if you can call them so, or those moments we realize that this is not what I want to do and this is where I want to be headed to. And if you've done that, hats off to you. You are one amongst the minority, okay? Most of you must have heard Tony Robbins speaking about the Niagara Falls. Do you know the Niagara Falls syndrome? Tony Robbins says, life is like a sprinting river. And we as human beings tend to toss our boats into the river, hop onto the boats and keep going in the direction of the river without knowing which way are we really headed. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Just like the river has its current, life has its current issues, current problems, current challenges. We tend to engage with them, disengage with them, get over, and then we keep just moving. We then sleep 
and we go into slumber and keep going along with the current of the river and the direction of the river until we wake up to the sound of gushing water, to the sound of water falling from a height. And we open our eyes and we see that we are five feet away from the Niagara Falls and we are about to take a drop. It could be at that moment, we strive to look for the oars, the controls, whatever we have on the boat, but alas, it's too late, you know. And then most of us take that drop. For some, it's a career drop. For some, it's a financial fall. For some, it's a relationship fall. For some, it's a life fall. Some are able to get up on their feet and get back to work again, but most are not. If only clear decisions had been made upstream to realize which way are they headed, right? That makes all the difference. And so I always say this, if you have a purpose in life, you have clarity. And if you have clarity in life, you have a purpose in life. That's always been my mantra. And that's why I keep clarity on a pedestal. And here's another thing, you know, for those who are fans of science, a study published in 2010 in Applied Psychology found that individuals with high levels of eudaimonic well-being, what's a eudaimonic well-being? Eudaimonic well-being means a person having a sense of purpose along with a sense of control and a feeling of being worthwhile is a eudaimonic well-being. People having a high sense of eudaimonic well-being tend to live longer is what the study found out. Not just that. The research also linked the feelings of having a sense of purpose to positive health outcomes, which means fewer, fewer risk, lesser risk of, uh, of strokes, lesser risk of heart attacks, much better sleep, and a lower risk of dementia and disabilities. And it gets better. A 2016 study published in the Journal of Research and Personality found that individuals who feel a sense of purpose make more money than individuals who feel as though their work lacks meaning. Imagine having a purpose not only helps you improve your health, not only makes you happy and cheerful, but pursuing your passion, having a purpose also enables you to make more money than your peers. Question is, if, if this is also good, why don't people do it? because people do not want to take time to find out what the purpose is. People do not want to take time why they should be doing this. And that's the whole issue. Live your life with purpose and passion. Every person dies, but a very few live. Wow, that's deep, Khalid. Thank you very much, right? And so here is what I'm going to share with you very, very, very quickly, four different questions. Purpose is important. We talked about it. Now, to delve deep into yourself to find out what you have to do, I'm going to, I'm going to give four questions to you. You can make a note of them or, um, you know, go through them at your leisure whenever you can. But these are important. They guided my life. And I'm sure they'll help you guide yours too. Most of the times when someone asks you, what do you want? You either have a very long list or you have no list at all, or you're confused as to what you really want in life. So the first question is, ask yourself, what do not I want? Ask yourself, what don't I want? In business strategy, we do the same thing. When we create a strategy, we look at things which we, which we are not going to do. And once we are clear on the things which are not going to do, what we're going to do becomes crystal clear to us. You must have heard of the story, the famous story of Michelangelo, the famous sculptor who created the masterpiece of masterpieces, David, right? The statue of David. And Michelangelo, when he created David, the Pope came to Michelangelo and asked him, Michael, how did you create this masterpiece of masterpieces? How did you even do this? What gave you the inspiration? And you know what Michael said? Michael said, it was simple. I chipped away everything that was not David. I chiseled away everything that was not David and David got formed. Find out what you do not want. What you want becomes clear in life. Second, ask yourself, what would I choose if the outcome was guaranteed? Most of the time, if you notice, we are so concerned about how we'll be, whether we'll be able to accomplish something or not. I want to start writing a book. I'm concerned if I start writing a book, will I be able to finish it in a year's time or six months time? Maybe not. Oh. You know, let me just leave it as a, as a project too. 
I want to start a business of myself, leave my high, high paying corporate job and, and jump into the world of entrepreneurship. Will I be successful? I'm not so sure, right? Can I, can I not? Ask yourself, what if the outcome was guaranteed and start doing things? You'll get much more clarity. Next, if others' opinions do not matter, what would I choose? We are so bogged on by what our parents think of us, what our friends think of us, what our relatives think of us, what our colleagues think of us. We are afraid to take the next step because we're concerned about opinions. Know this, opinions, others' opinions are just that. They're opinions, they're not facts. The fact is you. If you are a doctor and you want to get into a coaching profession, what you want to ask yourself is, if others' opinions do not matter, what would I choose? Doesn't matter what your parents think. Doesn't matter what your brother thinks. Doesn't matter what the world thinks. Be with yourself and answer that question. Finally, if I wasn't already so invested, what would I do? It's called as the investment syndrome, right? Because we've invested time, money, effort in doing something, even if that is not really working out, we tend to pursue it only because we invested something, time and money in it, right? Not a good idea. If you can, jump out of it and move on. It's a very, uh, very nice example to explain that analogy is, you know, as a husband and wife go to a movie theater and... 20 minutes into the movie, the husband realizes the movie is not really worth watching. He gets up and he says, you know, I want to leave. You know what the wife says? We've paid for the tickets. Might as well watch the whole movie, right? Classic case of being invested. And so pursue because we invested. Why? Why waste the rest of the time only because you bought those tickets? So I'll leave those four questions with you. We'll jump on straight down to the seven ways of how you can infuse clarity in your life. Before I do that, any questions so far, any comments, anything which you find which is not in, in line with the way you think, please go ahead, fill up the chat box and let me see what you guys actually have. I think the husband said we paid for the tickets. <laughs> well, no comments there. Okay, so seven hacks to clarity. This is time tested, tried and tested. I'm gonna move very, very quickly. Oh, I, we, we do have some time, right? Okay, so anyways, I'll, I'll try and move swiftly as, as much as possible. Now, as I mentioned, as I've traveled to, to countries, to continents and met people of various religions, races, color, the one thing that I've noticed in them is lack of clarity. And every time I caution them, you know, whether if you actually had a chance to do something different in life, would you? The response is 90% of the time are, yes, we would, but we have bills to foot, we have food to bring on the table, we have a family to feed, we have blah, 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 right? And that's what really stops most of us. But hey, no one's telling you to change overnight. No one's asking you to quit everything and just go and do something else, whatever you, whatever you desire to do. You can take time for yourself, but start doing that. And for that, to really understand what your passion is, to really have clarity in your life, here's what you wanna do. First thing, own it. You have to assume 100% responsibility for your own level of clarity. You know, when I talk to people, I realize that people have this, people have this assumption that clarity is something which comes with intellect. People have this assumption that clarity is dawned on someone because he was lucky. People believe that clarity will get attracted by the law of attraction or is bestowed upon you from the outside, from supernatural powers. All of these are untrue. All of these are untrue. Clarity is not something coming from the outside to you. Clarity is inside of you. Clarity is not something which is going to arrive to you because someone's bestowing it on you. Clarity doesn't. Clarity is not there with a certain person only because he's intelligent or lucky. Clarity is what you create for yourself. Clarity is a decision. Whatever degree of clarity you're experiencing right now is what you've decided to create. Not deciding still counts as a decision. And in that case, it's a decision to remain uncertain. Okay, I see some comments. Thank you, clarity bounces forward. Whatever degree of clarity, 
you're experiencing is is because of you now clarity is a decision decision as i said you know the word decision decide comes from the latin word decidere it's d e c i d e r e look it up if you can decidere decidere in latin means to cut off clarity sorry decide comes from that word which means you have to cut off when you decide on something when you decide on a direction you have to cut off from all other directions you have to be clear on what you want to pursue you cannot be everywhere it's not possible one of the reasons why warren buffett is a very successful investor and a multi billionaire and maybe the number one wealthiest man or number two whatever whatever he is is he has this lovely way of focusing on his stock investment when he is focusing on where to invest and where to divest that's the time he is totally cut off from the world he does not allow zero he does not allow any distractions to distract him he's so focused that's what makes him the wealthiest man or the wealthiest stock broker okay that's clarity for you by the way when i say when you decide something and you stick to it and cut off from everything else i'm not asking you to become very very rigid and not accept options and not look at options no please don't do not be rigid look at options weigh those options but don't succumb to those options don't try to do everything that's when things get wishy washy that's when things get fuzzy that's when things get cloudy okay you have to that you dare cut off when you decide on something now it's very possible that you may say oh you know i'm not really very good at creating clarity yet you know it's possible and i was the same and in fact if you are anything anything like me you might actually be in a position where you create more confusion for yourself than clarity right i see some of you nodding your heads but hey no one's perfect you have to start somewhere no one else is doing that to you it's you and you alone who has to decide and who has to move forward it all comes to you it's nothing to do with it, with your intellect nothing to do with your luck nothing to do with your genes okay so accept this fact if you want more clarity in your life it's time to treat the generation of clarity as a serious undertaking that's entirely 100% yours wow okay oh i have some lovely people on board today thank you everyone for joining in great so let's move on to the next one all clear so far let me give you one more example just to ensure that we all set here when you you know a, a sea captain or a commercial airliner for that matter the aeroplane in which you go for vacations wherever you go for whatever country a commercial airliner is 90% off track but it knows where it has to go when it starts from dubai and wants to go to amsterdam it is 90% off track from the decided route but it reaches wherever it has to reach in the given time it has been given destination clarity about the destination and deciding where you have to be that's first one next one let me see there you go there you go so stop creating the opposite of clarity what does that mean well you'll notice in your life there are some thoughts some actions that lead you to increased clarity then there are some thoughts and some actions which have an absolutely opposite effect right happens to me all the time now if you want to experience more clarity what you want to do is disengage yourself from those things which cloud your mind which start creating the opposite of clarity what do you want to focus on do those things which support you in getting clarity i call them as clarity busters and clarity boosters so let's look at the clarity busters first clarity busters are what first of all unfocused attention when you tend to be with people when you tend to live with people when you tend to sit and walk and talk with people who themselves are drifting in life who themselves do not have a goal in life who themselves have no purpose in life you tend to get sucked in to the clarity that they have around them some people call them toxic people i don't like that word but hey yes what you need to do is disassociate now these are the clarity busters let's look at what you're not supposed to do first because these are this is what exactly what people do right they create the opposite of clarity next conflicting values 
if you work with people, live with people, and be friends with people whose values are different than yours, especially for working, if you are into business or a job or in a company, have colleagues whose values are conflicting than your values, like for me, integrity is important. For me, family is important. For me, faith is important. If I start working with someone whose values not necessarily are supporting of mine or rather are conflicting to mine, you'll be spending a lot of time trying to get on the same page. You'll drain yourself out. You lose clarity. What you want to do is stay away from those people as well whose values are conflicting with yours. Next, feeding the mind. If you're going to feed your mind with Netflix binging, with, with YouTube and internet and Instagram and social media and web browsing and what have you, you generally are clouding your mind. You do not want to do that again. Okay. Next is mind numbing habits. What are mind numbing habits? Everything that you do. Okay, I'm, I just looked at the chat, so I'm getting distracted there. Keep it going, keep it going, guys. Don't worry. Um, uh, mind numbing habits are those things which tend to numb your mind. So, for example, fast food, alcohol, things which t smoking, right? Shisha. Things which numb you for a moment, things which do not allow you to think clearly, those that also is a clarity buster. And you might want to stay away from that too. Overstimulation, caffeine. I'm sorry, caffeine lovers. I am one too. I had to change my habit. I moved away from having three cups of coffee a day to one cup of coffee a day, which is fine. Overstimulation, anything which makes your mind race, anything which makes your thoughts race is not going to give you clarity. It's going to cloud your mind. Try to curtail that as much as possible. The next one is whining and complaining. You know, when you do not have clarity, you would say, I'm not so sure about what I'm going to do with my life. I'm not so sure what the next year is going to look like. I do not know what next month's going to be for me. Whining and complaining about the lack of clarity. Uncertainty is one thing, okay? Everybody's uncertain about tomorrow, but having clarity as to what you are supposed to do to achieve your goal is another thing. And so stop complaining about the lack of clarity. The more you complain about the lack of clarity, the more you keep attracting the lack of clarity. Okay, now these were, these were absolutely clarity busters as I call them. And here you go, these are the clarity boosters. Exactly opposite of what all we discussed just now, you have to stay with people who have a defined goal in life. You have to be with people who know where they're going. You have to be and associate yourself with people who have a direction in life. You have to work with people, be friends with people who share similar values as yours. I'm not saying cut off your relationships, be there with them, work with those who share similar values. Feed your mind rather than with Netflix and web surfing and social media, feed your mind with good books. Feed your mind with TED Talks. Feed your mind intelligently, positively, healthily, and clarity is not gonna go away anywhere. Okay, next is nourishment. We talked about it. Fast foods, pizzas, burgers, and everything that really numbs your mind, smoking and shisha and other habits. You have to stay away from all that. Regulate your caffeine, absolutely. And finally, like we discussed, rather than whining and complaining, what you want to do is look at what's my next steps towards achieving my goal. Where's my action plan? How many check marks have I given to it? Start thinking about that every time you think you do not have clarity and look how clarity starts evolving. All good so far? Let me look at the chats for a moment. Like, okay, haha, ha, mashallah, I'm also Khaled. Great, great, great. Okay, so <laughs> cool, keep on going. Moving on. Next is harvest clarity lessons from the past. What does this mean? You must have noticed in your life you have had moments in life, I have had mine, where you feel sometimes you're absolutely clear on something. And sometimes you feel you kind of have no clue what's going on and what's your next step, right? We all have been there. It happens to us sometime or the other. What's important is harvest those lessons. Find out those lessons. Find out what made you tick. Find out what made you be clear and start doing more of that and find out what made you fuzzier, find out what made you unclear. For me, if I get emotional, I get clouded. 
And so if I get emotional, I try not to take a decision. Clarity is not going to be anywhere near me at that moment in time, right? Now, what's those factors, you go to find out what, okay? Whatever, whatever factors lead you to reduce clarity, start doing less of them. I, I can give an example. When I was being interviewed by a German company once, a German manufacturer, and they interviewed me, the MD interviewed me, and he called me, and he, a couple of hours the interview went on long. And then he said, you know, this is not enough. We would like to have a presentation from you tomorrow on your most recent achievement or most recent project that you've managed very, very successfully. I had no option but to say, yes, sure. And I walked out of the office, came back home. While driving back home, I was constantly thinking, what do I show? What do I showcase? What achievement? Which project? What do I talk about? I had zero clarity. No, my mind was fogged, right? I came back home. My, my, my family wasn't here at the time. Had a, had a cup of coffee, took my car again. And I was in Dubai. I went to the Mumser Beach. Parked my car. It was November, December time, the weather was good. And you know the soft padding that you have on the Mumser beach for walking? I took a walk for an hour on that beach. Hearing the water on the shore, splashing and hitting the shore, I had absolute solitude. I had the fresh, cool air hitting my face. And as I was thinking, I knew exactly what I want to present the next day. I came back home, sat down until 2 a.m. in the morning, created my presentation. Next day, nine o'clock in the office, I gave my presentation. By evening, I had an offer letter. Clarity. Now you know, every time I need some clarity, what I actually do. Yes, I do the same. I go out for a walk. I spend myself, I spend some time in solitude. Hear some natural things if I can. Walk. And my mind becomes more clearer. So you have to find out what makes you take. For some of you, just writing down a goal could actually give you immense clarity. For some of you, when someone kind of nags you in trying to make you change yourself, might make you unclear. So you know what works for you, you know what doesn't work for you, follow what works, do more of that works, and do less of what does not work. These habits essentially, as we keep on doing them, these habits make clarity a habit as well in your life, okay? Next use visualization to create vibes of clarity. You know, every moment, either you're completely clear and focused or you're not, period. You cannot be something in between. Either you're here or you're the other side, right? Now, we as human beings, we generally assume, and I'm, I'm the same actually, that we believe that external reality has to be a certain way, has to be in a certain order for us to really feel clear and focused. Having all our ducks in a line allows us to feel in control, right? But it's not only external things which are going to give you clarity. You can actually use your imagination to create the feeling of clarity. Clarity is more than just a feeling, by the way. Clarity is even beyond an emotion. Clarity is vibes. It's more than emotion. It's more than a feeling. It's a level where when you're really, really clear, you can sense the vibe through every cell of your being. Your mind and your emotions are centered, they're aligned. Every part of you is on the same page. You know, smile if you've been through that phase. It's a beautiful feeling of being clear. You know exactly what you're going to do. Or you know exactly what you're not going to do. There's absolutely zero doubt or zero uncertainty. And that, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, is a powerful state of being to experience. It's a very, very powerful state. What you want to do is, if you have, if you have experienced that, I have experienced that, so that's why I can talk about, talk about that so passionately. If you, have, if you have experienced that, what you want to do is sit quietly for a few moments and imagine what it is like to be in complete vibe of total clarity. Imagine, close your eyes, not right now, whenever you can. Imagine your surroundings. Imagine the way you would be surrounded by people. Imagine what dress you would be wearing. Imagine how you would talk. Imagine how you would walk. Imagine how you would think when you're absolutely clear of where you are and then where you actually have to go. Paint that vivid picture of reality in your mind. It doesn't matter what you think. Look, in this visualization part, it doesn't really matter who you think you are. You might consider yourself as an emperor or empress wearing golden clothes. It doesn't matter. 
what's important is the feeling, the vibe that you create in your mind and body of being clear. Do this for 15 to 20 minutes every single day. Any one of you who does meditation will absolutely agree with me. Meditation and visualization can, find, can combine together. You have a six out of the park. Okay. Any one of you who does not believe in the power of visualization, I doubt whether there's anyone. Okay. But any one of you who does not believe in the power of visualization, there are plenty of studies and research which has been conducted to show the effectiveness. I can talk about one, Alan Richardson, Australian guy, he conducted an experiment. He's an Australian psychologist. He conducted an experiment with a group of basketball players. Richardson divided the participants into three groups and tested their free throws ability. The first group was supposed to practice for 20 minutes every day for 20 consecutive days. The second group was supposed to just sit down and visualize that they're actually practicing free throws for 20 minutes every day for 20 consecutive days. And the third group was asked to do absolutely nothing at all. 20 days later, when the game was checked, the first group, which practiced consecutively for 20 days, the game had improved by 24%. The third group who did nothing at all, you know, no surprises there, the game didn't improve really. The surprise came from the second group who was visualizing the free throws, sitting in one place, 20 minutes a day for 20 consecutive days. Their game improved by 23%, almost the same as the guys who really were slogging it out on the field, 20 minutes every day for 20 consecutive days. Amazing, power of visualization, it's unparalleled. The power of your mind is beautiful and show that you can actually put to good use. Have we got on time, Conan? Okay. Uh, we are on, on number four, so I'm going to quickly move on. Yes. Next one is ask for help. It so happens that we as human beings, not everybody, I am not very shy to ask for help, but some people are. And hey, here's the thing. If you need help, in finding out what's good for you or how can you actually achieve clarity in your life, feel free to reach out to your family, feel free to reach out to your friends, go to a coach, go to a counselor, but know this very well. There might be people who mean well for you, who want to really assist you, but may not be mature enough to give you clarity. They might end up confusing you. So choose the people whom you go to help very, very clearly very, very smartly, but please make sure you ask for help. There's absolutely zero shame in asking for help. Everybody needs someone who can guide you. But know this in mind as well, again, when someone shows you, when someone actually assists you, whether it's a coach, counselor, parent, friend, colleague, relative, whoever that is, you are still responsible for your clarity. You're not giving your clarity in their hands. You are still owning your own level of clarity. They can only guide you, but you have to create your own path. Okay, cool, moving on, moving on. The next one is put your goals in writing and review them daily. No rocket science, but you know what? This is a habit which is kindergartenish and yet it's so powerful and yet its practice remains inconsistent. I always say this, as soon as you write down your goals, whatever is in your mind is a fantasy. The minute you put it on paper, it becomes a goal. Write it down, be more clear, be precise, and not just write it down, review them every single day. First of all, you have to make sure that you create goals which are very specific and review them. Every single morning, every single evening, if you can, you have to read out your goals, imagine them as a reality. Imagine them as something which is not just a fantasy, not just something on a piece of paper. You have to imagine them as if they are turning out to be real. For example, if someone wants to migrate to Canada, right, he has to start imagining. And by the way, I have an example who's done that. One of my neighbors who wanted to go to Canada used a huge Canadian flag and put it on his, on his bedroom wall. Every day before going to sleep and every day getting up in the morning, the first thing is to see is a Canadian flag. A year later, he was in Canada. It's magical. Yes, it, it does work. It's all about having those goals in the right place. Jack Canfield says it very well. He says, index every goal on your cards. Right? And I have an index card for each goal of yours and review them 
one goal on each card and review them every morning and evening. When you get up in the morning and we go to bed in the evening, review them and visualize them to be real. And that's what will allow you to move forward with your goals. Don't try to strive for perfection. No one is perfect, except the fact that any goal is better than no goal at all. Okay, and finally, the last one, I know we are running out of time, so I'm gonna speed up. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I got a message to speed it up. I'm gonna, and so crystallizing your goals. Again, it's not rocket science, but what do you want to do for those of you who are into goal setting, you want to make your goals very, very binary. You want to make your goals very, very specific. You want to make smart goals. You want to dot your I's and cross your T's. I always say this, have a goal which is binary. Which means what? When I ask you a question about the goal, for example, if your goal is, you write a wishy-washy goal, which is, I want to make more money. And six months later, if I ask you, have you achieved your goal or not? Your answer should be either yes or no. Not maybe or on the way, no. Your goals have to be binary. Crystallize them that way. Make them specific, crystallize them that way. Add as much detail you can to it, crystallize them that way, okay? Some people complain and whine that they do not really have any goals to write. I say then, well, if you do not really have a goal in life, why don't you do this? Use a blank paper, write goals on it, and put it on the wall. That's what you want, that's what you'll get. Really, having no goals? Everybody needs something, right? It's foolish for not wanting anyone who says, I do not have a goal. It's impossible. Everybody wants something. So get into the habit of crystallizing your goal. Don't pressure yourself again. Don't try to make a list which is perfect. Just go for it. I'll close by saying this example, have a vision board. Absolutely. I'll close by saying this, Walt Disney. Everybody is aware of Walt Disney. Walt Disney was on his deathbed. And while he was on his bed, he was dying. He asked the reporter to come close to him. And when the reporter came close to him, Walt shared his vision of Disney World with him, which was not yet open. It was supposed to be open in six years. It was still starting to conceptualize. So Walt shared his vision of the Disney World with him. And then when Disney was finally opened up to public six years later, of course, after Wall died. Another reporter commented to Roy, who was Wall's brother. He said, too bad, Wall isn't around to see this. And you know what Roy said? Roy said, Wall saw it first. That's why we're seeing it happen now. Power of goals, power of believing in your goals. That's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. That's me, the handsome me. And you can follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and Twitter as well. My YouTube is a bit different. It's youtube.com slash C slash Dr. Omar Sharif. Feel free to get connected to me. I'll be happy to assist wherever I can. Conan, over to you.